Hey everyone, Aaron Banks and Thomas Henson here from the BigDataBeard.com group. And recently we decided to sign up for this class on Coursera and it's the Introduction to Machine Learning with Andrew Ng. And it's 11 week course and we figured we'd just uh, talk about it every week. So if you're interested in taking the course or thinking about taking the course, um, subscribe to the channel, to the YouTube channel and follow us every week to kind of get our updates. Again, this is just for week one. And this is, again, our first time talking about the course and our thoughts on it and our opinions on everything like that. So, Thomas, what were your thoughts about the week one for this course? Well, I thought week one would be a little bit easier. We might have to change the name of this series to Watch Me Fail, <laughs> the machine learning course. So, I don't know. I mean, it was pretty difficult. Um, you know, my background, I've, you know, I've got an undergrad and, and a grad degree, but they're all on the business side. So, I was computer information systems and, and even on a master. So, I didn't really go too deep into math. And so, this is like my first kind of go around going really deep in math. And also, I mean, I think the last time I was sat in a college class was, I don't know, six, seven years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I had that same problem. So, my background is definitely has math in it. It's electrical engineering. I had my degree, but it was. I don't even know if I want to tell you when I graduated college. It was a long, long time ago. <laughs> tell us. And this I was is, like, this is oh. the truth area. You... <laughs> so in 1997, I graduated from Northeastern University in Boston, Massachusetts Ugh. with an electrical engineering degree. So I haven't done any of it. So that's what I thought. And A, it was really, I thought the best part was having other people take the class because I have to just always start off. I always like to start off with a negative and then be prepared and do the positive because my biggest frustration I totally agree with you. I thought the practice exams, like I was going to do great. But then when it came to the last test, which you can take three times, um, and then if you fail all three times, you have to wait eight hours. Yeah. And I failed the first time I took it. And I didn't, there wasn't any way to really go back and look, and there wasn't any explanation because I think a bunch of us, right? So altogether, there's four of us that are taking the class that we know of just within the Big Data Beard community. And we felt you know, we would have like meetings and talk about the course and everything along those lines and separate, you know, just hangouts and FaceTimes and things like that. And there was no explanation after the test about like what you got wrong or why you got it wrong or what you were kind of learning along those lines or, or kind of anything to give you hints. Hey, it's in this area. This is what you should practice or read up on this. And I didn't like that because I kept feeling like if I were in a real course, I would be able to ask somebody. I would be like, okay, this this didn't make any sense to me. Can you help explain it to me? Can you provide some greater insight? And we don't have that. And I went back in the forums to look and somebody had specifically asked for it. And the the mentor that's on that for week one was like, we don't do that. And I said, I think you guys need to rethink that. That's, that's a huge failure. I feel on your part. Um, because you're basically either you're going to fail and, uh, other people be like, well, okay, well, this is the side information that I got. I had to do some Googling, you know, these are how these formulas work. Um, this is along those lines. It wasn't explained the best way. So check it out. Yeah. So first off you have an EE and, and, and you're complaining. I mean, wow. <laughs> so <laughs> well, it was so long ago though. Like I don't, and I use like joke, like I haven't done electrical engineering in, you know, forever, even when I first got out of college. So it's just a little, it's just not, electrical engineering was great, but it's just not something that I'm always doing in my day-to-day -day life, especially now. Yeah. Well, but I tell you one thing, so same, you know, same problems there. I think I never got more than 80% on any of the tests. I didn't have to take each one yeah. um, multiple times, but I started finding out like, let me see, let me look at my notes. So I'm a note taker. So anybody, anybody yep. that's watching, I'm a, I'm a crazy note taker in my awesome yeah. moleskin, you know, I'm a snob when it comes to the notebooks, but I hear you. One of the things that I started figuring out, I guess, after I got through the cost model, like the cost and, uh, yeah, model and cost function, when I started getting into linear algebra parts, uh, I think the last two, the last two sections, what I started doing was instead of watching the video first, I jumped ahead, took the notes and look, went, went through some of that, even though I totally didn't understand some of it, it was good. Like, so, you know, you pretty much just practicing your writing a little bit there, it feels like, but you're trying to figure it out in your head by reading it, then go back and watch the video. And it makes a whole lot more sense. But I will say it was still hard when I would when I would go through and take those uh, quizzes. But it was kind of it was kind of weird because like I felt like through part of the linear algebra I did really well in like the in course quizzes. So I, I don't know if you remember kind of as you were going through and you had to do some of the yep. you know I mean it, pretty much it was just like some fun simple math once you figured out yep. the equations and stuff. So that's my tip for anybody taking it is 
if, if you're a crazy note taker, because a lot of times, like what I was doing through the first two sections is I was, I was missing, you know, what Andrew was saying because I was sitting there frantically trying to copy down what he was doing on the slides. And then, you know, I, I was kind of losing it and having to go back and reference in my notes. So what I started doing was taking those notes beforehand because after in, at the end of each section, there's kind of like a summary after the video. And so I, honestly, for me, I think it should be switched. And so if anybody out there is a, a, a note taker, just try that for one section and see how you do it. See, it seemed to work a little bit better for me. Yeah, and you can download the transcripts, right? You can download the slides. You can download a lot of the information that's happening on that course. And even when you're taking the final exam, you know, you have all of that information available to you, which was great. And I did appreciate that. But I think that's really important to understand. I, I think I hopefully will do better now that I understand how the course is kind of laid out and how the tests are done because you get a totally, again, a, a kind of a, a nice feeling when you're taking those sample quizzes along the way. You're like, yeah, I get this. I understand this is making sense. I'm really excited. And then that last, you know, five questions that they ask and you have to get four of them right or you fail with just, you know, brought a little tear to my eyes, a little pain. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to, this is, I thought it was better than, not better than this, but I thought I, I thought I had it, right? I had a little bit of confidence and then it was squashed. So I love your points about like reading it and then going back. And especially that's certainly what helped me taking it again, because when I realized, all right, well, you failed the, the test. You have to really sit down and review it. I'd already taken the notes. I use Evernote to take my notes. Um, I use them both, either typing it or actually writing it. But I, I knew that I was going to need all that information to easily reference it back. So I took all those notes and then watched it work. I could consciously like look at him and understand. And I guess in some sense it was also nice because I knew what the questions were around. So then I could be like, all right, this is I, – I wasn't looking at it the way I guess that they were looking at it. Maybe – Maybe. I don't know if that's kind of correct, but the way that they were asking it, I was kind of viewing it a little bit differently. Now I see what they're saying. Now I completely understand this, this formula means this, and this is how I have to use it. And this is kind of like, it made a lot more sense. It kind of finally, by the time I did all that, then I was able to just take that test perfectly. Thank God. So that worked out for me. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, like I said, not having a, not having a lot of the deep math, it was kind of interesting as we were going through, I think it was the gradient descent section where he was like, yeah. you know, the first, the first few slides, he was like, you know, kind of going through and I thought it was pretty deep. And then at the end, he kind of gave us the hook for what we're going to get, what we're going to learn in the next video. He's like, and now we'll go and get deeper. And I'm like, wait, wait a minute. We're already pretty deep. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. I mean, I'm definitely, I'm looking forward to week two. I think it'll be good to kind of see how it goes. I, again, I can't stress enough how nice it is a little bit to have like a support system, especially for week one. Um, that's just been great um, to just kind of get some like clarity in my brain and try to like, okay, is this how I make it work? No. So that, that certainly is helpful. And I know they talk about that in the actual class, right? That you need kind of like the group to talk to one another and kind of do the introductions. That tends to be difficult. So it's nice if you're able to, you if you know some of the people and you're able to use some of the technology that we have nowadays, like, a Google Hangout or a FaceTime or anything along those lines, get a couple of people together, even if they have to like leave and kind of like vent about it. And it's kind of like almost like a support group uh, to help right. you kind of get through the class. I'm not sure if I would be able to do it um, without everyone just to kind of, hey, did you take the quiz yet? What did you think? What were your thoughts? And really just be able to bounce it off of one another, which is nice. Yeah, kind of struggle together. Maybe that's one thing we should do is maybe, maybe we should start posting uh posted a link to the uh, YouTube videos uh, once we get these pushed out internally inside, ins even inside of our course and see if some of the other, some of the other students, maybe it'll kind of help, you know, kind of like yeah. a sounding board. So. Yeah, that's great. And certainly if they can add like comments or anything like along those lines, because I think the more information and to be prepared, because I had no, I'd never taken a course before, you know, through this company. So it was, I didn't really know what to expect. So I've taken online classes. I was working on my MBA. So I was trying to do those kind of things and you just, you just don't know. Um, and certainly classes like this are, I think, somewhat difficult when you don't, when it's everything that's online. Yeah. And I think as we got to go through this course, it's going to be a lot more fun. And you were talking about week two. I'm excited about week two when we get to start using, uh, I think it's Octave or Oct yeah. Octave versus uh, Math Lab and uh, just kind of be able to go through and get hands on a little bit more. So I'm excited to see what that brings and maybe, maybe I'll be able to shine a little bit more there. So, but for everybody that's watching, I think this is great. Just, just with you and I being on. So, you know, Aaron, who has a major math background with EE and some other pieces, 
but you know, maybe has, hasn't been, hasn't used those math skills in a while. And then me yeah. who's, who, who hasn't used those math skills in a while, but never had them too. So, you know, yeah. for, for people watching along or really just contemplating whether to take the course or not, we're, we're, we'll be your guinea pigs and you can kind of follow us along. Yeah. I love that. I certainly would, uh, wish I had that to kind of begin with. So I think it's great, great capabilities. I look forward to week two. So hopefully everyone will subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, so that they can follow along with us as we do the course. And certainly if you're preparing to take it or you want, you're thinking about it, you know, just review them. These are going to be really quick snippets just to get your kind of opinions, best practices, and what we've learned along the way so that you can be successful yourself. So thanks for your time.